No, we never taught her how to swim yet. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Today is Friday the 13th, 59 days since Summer Wells disappeared. In this episode, we're going to examine an illustration, I suppose I could also call it an animation, that is a powerful analogy, an allegory, in other words, for what very likely happened to Summer at the swimming hole, especially in light of Don's recent concession that Summer couldn't swim. I often feel the number one ingredient missing in the makeup of detectives, cops, lawyers, judges, the true crime community in general is a failure of the imagination. I believe it's the central reason why the John Bonet Ramsey case went the way that it did, as well as why the Madeleine McCann case went the way that it did. Even in the Barry Morphew case, did anyone imagine Suzanne might have been the one having the affair? But coming back to missing children cases, one of the major reasons why adults cannot fathom what happened to a six-year-old child beauty queen or a three-year-old daughter of doctors or Summer Wells is because we've lost touch with our own inner child. So how do we connect once again with those memories? Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment and let's get started. Well, the good news is I'm not going to snap my fingers and simply expect anyone to imagine everything, although I guess you could do that. Instead, we're going to approach the woods from very, very far away. As we zoom closer and closer, it's possible your mind may actually stitch together what I'm trying to build in your consciousness before we get to our destination, which is this illustration. And this illustration comes out of reality, something that happened a year ago in May 2019, mid-May 2019. So whether you see it because your mind conjures it or because of the illustration, by the end of this episode, I hope to have convinced you of the central reason why summer was lost 59 days ago today. So we're going to start off by looking at the statistics. And as I say, we're going to take a, a kind of a global view and then come closer and closer to the, this illustration. Did you know that around 10,000 people, mostly small children and infants, drown each day worldwide? That's 416 drownings per hour, just under seven per minute, which in turn equates to more than one every 10 seconds. 24 hours a day. In the USA, approximately one child drowns every day year round on average. So in terms of the stats, drowning is the leading cause of unintentional death for children ages one to four, according to the CDC. Uh, 356 deaths occur a year in America, and this was based on um, stats from 2012 to 2014. That's uh, uh, approximately one a day, and 77% of those deaths involve children younger than the age of five. You might be dismissive of these stats, but a, a last stat that we're going to look at is that African-American children between the ages of five and 19 are 5.5 times more likely to drown in a pool than other children of the same age. Now, besides age, socioeconomics also play a huge role in drowning rates. More than 90% of drowning deaths occur in low- and middle-income countries. Besides age and socioeconomics, consuming alcohol within the context of swimming is another significant risk factor. Of the three risk factors highlighted, summer ticks all three of the boxes in terms of age, economics, and the presence of alcohol. You might say it hasn't been proven that alcohol was a factor, so we're going to examine a scenario where alcohol is completely absent. Before we do, I want you to ask you a quick question. What's your experience with drowning? If it's so common, hasn't everyone had some sort of close encounter with water that almost ended in disaster? Well, I'll go first. In my case, my brother nearly drowned in the deep end of a swimming pool when he was, I think, three or four years old. My mother was from quite a poor family and never learned how to swim, had a close call as a young adult in the deep end of a public pool. 
Once, while on holiday at the Wild Coast, my brother and I rescued a little girl who was being swept out to sea by a strong current emptying out of a lagoon into the sea. We were quite strong swimmers. And when I was a university student, I had a near-death experience during a sea swim. The circumstances were different. Um, It was a swimming event, it was a race, and hypothermia was a factor. But the point is, in my family alone, where three of the five of us were strong swimmers, arguably four, three of us had seriously close calls with water. What about you? My most recent near drowning was in a half Ironman triathlon near Durban, probably about four years ago, when I was dumped by a huge wave. So that's effectively five near drowning scenarios that I can think of that I either survived or someone close to me did. The point is, if you really think about it, it's common. It's more likely to happen or almost happen than not to happen. Don't believe me? Well, let's look at this illustration now. In mid-May last year, three-year-old Kaylee Dallas went underwater in a crystal clear hotel swimming pool. Although Kaylee had a flotation device and was swimming in the shallow area, she underestimated the depth of the pool and once she tipped over, failed to find a way back to the surface. The video suggests that it took just 40 seconds for Kaylee to go from a happy-go-lucky three-year-old playing at the pool to comatose. And so I'm going to put a link in the description. The whole thing is less than two and a half minutes long. And you can watch that before you continue watching the rest of this video. So why don't you head on over to the link in the description and check it out. Well, I hope you've done that. If you haven't done it, by all means, uh, go and do it at the end of this uh, episode. Now, in reality, Kaylee was actually under the water for almost two minutes. Despite efforts to revive Kaylee, she was hospitalized, and even then, doctors weren't sure whether the little girl was going to make it. Now, contrast this image of Kaylee in hospital, in kind of a coma, eyes closed, looking like she's possibly sleeping, but actually in a serious condition, to the last photo of Summer Wells. I think you'll agree with me that what stands out in the actual video is the speed at which this can happen and how easily it appears that it can happen. Any potential pause in one's attention or supervision while a small child is swimming can be lethal, especially if the small child that's swimming can't swim. And that brings us to the next level in this interrogation where we get very close to the events as they played out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to zoom in and we're going to juxtapose the Kaylee incident at the hotel pool with Summer's incident at the swimming hole, right? So we're going to juxtapose the one, then the other, the one, then the other. So when we uh, examine that video, and you're welcome to watch it quite a few times, it starts off with Kaylee playing, right? Kaylee is playing and she wants to play. And how does she do it? By jumping into the water, That is how Kaylee is enjoying herself by the hotel pool. In the last footage of Summer at the swimming hole, she's also enthusiastically jumping into the water. We see that in the TikTok video. In Kaylee's case, she finds herself in distress immediately after jumping. Didn't the same thing happen to Summer? Kaylee seems to be modeling herself on her older sister, who is also jumping into the water with a flotation device nearby. So in this particular image, you can see her sister at the far end of the pool, and what she's doing is habitually jumping into the the water. And you'll notice at almost the same time that her sister jumps in, so does Kaylee. And so obviously uh, her sister doesn't notice Kaylee because she's in the water herself. So the question is, did Summer model herself on Macbeth? Was he swimming around in deeper water? So in both cases, did these older children not know to warn their charges of the dangers of being in deep water and being unable to swim? Remember, these older children could swim and were perhaps in their minds not technically in the lifeguard role. I'm referring to Macbeth and Kaylee's older sister, Jayla. So perhaps these older children, although they were swimming with these younger children, They were perhaps technically not in the lifeguard role because there was another adult present. And in both cases, the child's respective mothers were present. So 
you know, who ultimately rescues the child when something happens? Well, in both cases, the mothers are in the background playing a passive role. And this is how it starts. It starts with something unexpected happening from the perspective of the little swimmer. Kaylee didn't expect to lose control, but she did, and she did so suddenly. Once she did, the only way out was for someone to notice her quickly and rescue her quickly because Kaylee couldn't swim. Kaylee underestimated the possibility of the flotation device not being sufficient to keep her afloat, and in a cruel twist, the green device actually seemed to help push her under, at least initially. If we bring this to the swimming hole, something unexpected happened there, didn't it? Probably Summer underestimated the footing underneath, and when it suddenly dropped off, her only way out was to be rescued, because she couldn't swim either. Now, despite two guardians being present, this is at the hotel pool, Kaylee still got into trouble. Although Kaylee's sister Jayla saved her younger sister, Jayla was playing some distance away, and she was distracted by what she was doing, which is why it took so long to notice Kaylee. Also, Kaylee's mom was on the phone, in other words, distracted, when the incident happened. If we take that to the swimming hole, we have a, a complete match. There were supposedly three guardians present, although if grandma was in the vehicle, she probably doesn't count. To be honest, I'm not really convinced that grandma was there to begin with. In any event, just like the adult at the hotel pool, Candace was probably on her phone. According to Macbeth, they were watching TikTok videos when something happened to Summer. What this means is that neither of them were swimming, meaning neither Candace nor Macbeth were swimming, which means neither of them were near Summer. And also the video, the music of the videos they were watching may well have not just distracted them, but drowned out Summer if she did cry out from some distance away. In the hotel pool scenario, the child doesn't cry out and no one notices anything from the increasingly in ineffectual splashes as Kaylee eventually loses her struggle and then sinks under the water. So another thing to juxtapose is Jayla's rescue of Kaylee. It, it's rapid. Can you imagine Macbeth acting with the same speed and conviction and um, effectiveness? What we see with Jayla is she sprints towards her sister. She's got a nice um, concrete uh, sort of a level um, uh, terrain to, to run on. So, you know, she can run quite quickly. And she's also able to sort of launch herself through the air to land in the water right beside her sister. Even so, you can time it. It takes her about 10 seconds from the moment she realizes her sister's in trouble. And bear in mind, she um, probably sees the floating device and then possibly also can see through the water. She can see that her sister's submerged. Now, in a scenario at the swimming hole, it would take a couple of seconds to kind of register First of all, while I can't see some, and second of all, while I can't see her, she must be under the water, even though I can't see her under the water. Does that make sense? So, um, according to Macbeth, it took him four to five seconds to rescue Summer at the swimming hole. Do you think that that is likely, given um, what Jayla, Jayla does in this case? In his version of events, he still had to remove his shirt, stand up, and wade out or swim to summer wherever she was. Now contrast that with Jayla, who was standing, didn't need to undress, could see her sister was underwater from a distance, based on the empty flotation device, as well as possibly seeing the shape of her sister underwater. How would Macbeth know where even to begin? How would he know where to look for summer? You know, if, if she was under the water, how would he know where she was under the water, given the murkiness of the water. So that brings us to another one. Despite Jayla rescuing Kaylee, she actually isn't equipped to save her, which results in someone else taking over the rescue, and it's this aspect, as well as Jayla's quick reaction, that ultimately saves her life. Now, do you think, would, uh, do you think Macbeth would have the skills needed to render the aid Summer would have needed if a similar incident had occurred? What about Candace? And what if one or both were intoxicated? How would that impact Summer's odds of survival? If Jayla was asked, you know, how long was Kaylee under the water? Do you think she'd be able to guess the answer? It's because she wasn't paying attention that she can't know the answer to that question. Do you see that? 
Now, accounts vary regarding how long summer was underwater. We've heard one minute, we've heard 10 seconds or something. But Macbeth most recently admitted that he didn't know how long it was. And, well, how could he? Cayley's case illustrates that there can be permanent damage or worse from a very short period underwater, less than two minutes. Cayley benefited from the fact that numerous people were summoned to the scene as well as ongoing treatment in hospital. Summer, if she was treated, was treated only by her companions, who likely didn't have the skills to handle the incident if it happened. The swim occurred when no one else was around. On the other hand, the incident occurred in an area where staff and help could be uh, summoned quickly. And that is actually what happened. In terms of the swimming hole, the swim also occurred where no one else was around. The swimming hole was a relatively remote and private location. This counted against a random person randomly noticing Summer and rescuing her. But the other side to this is if something happened, no one would have witnessed it. Consider a scenario where, for whatever reason, Kaylee's mother and sister chose to cover up what had happened. Could they, in the, could, could they do that in the middle of the hotel grounds? Now consider that as an option at Warrior Path Park. Do you think it was an option to pretend nothing had happened? And that brings us to the conclusion. Even when no one is drunk or high in that hotel scenario and there are guardians present, children can drown and Kaylee very nearly did. That's how easy, that's how easily it can happen. Now imagine the same scenario when folks are drunk N and now is a good time to turn on, to flick that switch of your imagination. Imagine a scenario where folks are drunk, high, and a lot more distracted than at that hotel. Imagine instead of the crystal clear lightning network swinging across um, a swimming pool floor, the fabric is totally different. It's obscured by foliage. The fabric of the swimming hole is murky and muddy and slippery. What do you think the outcome is likely to be? The fabric of the, the mines that were present there is also murky and muddy and slippery, possibly as a result of the substances that they're consuming. Well, my position is, if I was 60 to 70 percent sure that there was an incident at the swimming hole that fateful day in June, now with Don's concession that Summer couldn't swim, and this footage, I'm 90 percent certain. How about you? All right, I'm not going to take it further than that. Uh, I did actually want to go live tonight, but there's quite a big thunderstorm outside. I've kind of had things to do, and I am pretty tired. So um, I will probably do a live tomorrow dealing with an additional analysis of the swimming hole incident. I'd like to hear what you guys say, what you guys think, what you guys have experienced in your childhoods in, with regard to drowning or near drownings. Do you think that it's likely? How likely do you think it is? And if it did happen, where does that take us? If it did happen with Summer's mother, why would Summer's father do something if he did anything? I think another aspect that I think is just certainly interesting from a psychological perspective is in a scenario where Summer disappears, where Summer is lost, right, in terms of going under the water, you know, it's something that shocks and perhaps unsettles um, her companions, and, and do they then do the same once they're presented with, with that uh, situation? They've been shocked by a situation where summer is lost, summer disappears, and do they then, is there then a situation after that where summer is made to disappear, and then what happens? We are shocked, and 59 days later, we still don't know where she is, we still can't see her, we are still shocked. But is the difference here that we are not distracted in searching for her and we're not going to get distracted. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.